Yes, I'm uh, pretty happy to make this presentation today. I'm going to present the work that I've done with my PhD supervisors, uh, Emmanuel Jandel and Simon Perdri, and uh, it is entitled Addition and Differentiation of Z ZX Diagrams. So uh, I'll start by uh, giving some context, and in particular, I will explain what does it mean, the differentiation in uh, uh, quantum computing, and why indeed it is so important for near future applications. So then I will move to the ZX side of my uh, talk by giving firstly a very brief introduction and then I will uh, explain how do we do to add two ZX diagrams. So I want to attract your attention that uh, in uh, the uh, techniques that we introduce, the result of the addition is an as ZX diagram. So it's not always the case, but uh, for us, you took two diagrams and you get a diagram as an output. And then in the end, I will show how we do differentiation. We are pretty helped by the, the addition construction as well so uh, and I think that uh, that, we, uh, that will be all so uh, let's start uh, first of all uh, like some fundamental algorithms right like Schwarz algorithm and Gruber al algorithm excited a lot of minds about the quantum computing but unfortunately these wonderful algorithms are not supposed to work in the near future noisy and small quantum computers because they need some heavy error correction and a lot of qubits in general so people are asking the questions uh, is it indeed possible to do something with uh, the uh, near-term machines which are conventionally called NISC for noisy intermediate scale so uh, and uh, it is believed that uh, probably something we can get something by using variational algorithms so uh, what do I mean by variational algorithm is an algorithm which combines classical and a quantum part and in on the quantum side it prepares a circuit which uh, is a combination of uh, several variational ansatz you can see an example of an ansatz like here uh, in the slide and uh, uh, typically the gates and the ansatz can depend on some parameters Parameters. So that's how we get uh, the variational part. And uh, the classical part of uh, uh, the algorithm is supposed to provide us with the optimal values of, uh, uh, of the parameters. And uh, we, we're going to see a little bit later what does it mean optimality in the settings. And uh, just to give some examples, there are very famous uh, variational algorithms uh, like QOA, which is used for combinatorial optimization, variational quantum agent solver, which is used for the ground state research, and uh, a bunch of work on quantum machine learning, uh, which also use uh, variational circuits, parameter-dependent circuits. So I will uh, explain a little bit more using the example of combinatorial optimization. So a combinatorial optimization in a combinatorial optimization task, we have a cost function. Uh, which is defined on a set of binary variables and uh, what do we want is we want to find an assignment for this variable which minimizes the cost function so uh, for example this settings is perfectly valid for such very well-known graph problems like maximum independent set and so on so uh, our variational algorithm is going to prepare a state and uh, uh, the answer that it will return for our initial optimization problem is going to be a measurement of this state, which is done on a quantum computer. So, um, and now the, the question is, so we need to fix some parameters because we can't just uh, execute some, something without, without having this precision. So uh, how do we fix the parameters? First of all, we can associate to each uh, optimization function a Hermitian operator, which is diagonal in computational basis, and uh, its agent values are equal to the value of the function in uh, the corresponding uh, bit assignment. And then uh, we can also uh, measure the expectation value of this Hermitian operator as well. We're going to call it uh, uh, cost Hamiltonian because it's a term which is accepted by the community. And uh, uh, typically, how do we do it? So we prepare and measure, prepare and measure the state. So we're going to get not the exact value of of the function, but uh, some stochastic appro uh, approximation of it. And uh, the precision of stochastic approximation is determined by the, no by the amount of shots that you have. So 
uh, you need a quantum computer to do so. And then uh, um, it sounds reasonable to ask for parameters such as uh, this expectation is as small as possible. And indeed, for example, uh, we, we are guaranteed that if we have the, some, some expect, we, we manage to find the parameters that guarantee some expectation value, then uh, if we measure our circuit a polynomial amount of time, uh, with high probability, we're going to get a value which is at least as small as this uh, expectation value. And now this optimization is typically done by some classical algorithms, uh, and uh, that's how we get this quantum classical hybrid methods. So now let's uh, look on the function. And uh, typically, this expectation value is an analytical continuous function. And here you see an example of how it looks like for QAOA with only two parameters. And uh, you can uh, directly see that uh, it's something weird with a lot of minimums and maximums, like the color corresponds to the value of, uh, uh, of the function. And uh, it's not obvious how do we do to find the optimum of, of such a function. And uh, indeed, it was remarked by the community that it's a very challenging exercise to find optimal parameters. And I see like here is an example only for two parameters. You can have more and uh, things are only getting worse when you have more parameters. And it was even observed that for some variational and that it can be MP hard to find the optimal parameters uh, as well. So, uh, but this task of uh, optimization of uh, multivariable function, it ex existed long before the appearance of quantum computing. And uh, uh, there are a lot of methods that were developed and uh, some of them uh, make a heavy use of derivatives in order to uh, navigate the parameter space. So I just listed some of them uh, here. You, of course, you can have also der derivative-free methods, but uh, normally when you solve the, this continuous optimization task in a, uh, in a, like normal settings, and if your function admits a differentiation uh, and it's analytical, uh, the um, algorithms that make use of derivative have a better performance, both in theory and in practice. So. Uh, but here is the problem because <laughs> it was already not obvious how do we do to compute the, the, the function itself, the cost function itself. But uh, when we try to do the derivative, things are only getting worse because uh, the derivative uh, of a parameterized unitary transformation is not promised to be unitary. So how do we do it in, in the quantum hardware? So there is some easy way to do it is just to use a finite approximation uh, uh, formula. But uh, you can see that the both values involved in the finite approximation uh, normally are evaluated up to some error, which depends on the number of shots. And it is not impossible that uh, uh, you, you're going to have to to, uh, to prepare and measure your state too many, too many times in order to have a, a derivative with some reasonable uh, reasonable error. So there are, there are some more advanced techniques than, uh, uh, than the ones that I mentioned previously. and. Uh, it turns out that for some parameterized gates, or for some parameterized unitaries, uh, there existed so-called parameter shift rules, like uh, which express the derivative at some point of a parameter space as a linear combination of derivatives in other points of parameter space. And uh, this approach was, for example, implemented in the Penelaine package, which uh, was developed by Xanadu people. And uh, it turns out it's, that it is a very hot topic for the research, like the three paper appear, appeared one after another uh, tr trying to, to, to deal with the problem. And uh, the whole point of this is that probably if we can help with ZX, people are going to be happy. Very happy, a lot of people. OK, so that is the conclusion. So, and, uh, uh, but uh, the ZX is a very powerful tool, and I think you already you know more than me about it. So, uh, and uh, the question is why it was so, uh, why it wasn't so much applied for variation algorithms. And basically, the problem was because we, is that we we didn't know how to do the derivative. But we can help. And the guys also who are giving the talk after me, they can help in their own way. So you will see it. <laughs> so uh, let's see why it is so difficult to perform the differentiation. Uh, basically, the difficulty comes from what is so called product rule. So let's imagine that we can find a derivative for some unitary parameterized gate. We can do it for another unitary parameterized gate. But now let's imagine that we just combined both of them and we want to have a derivative for, for, uh, for the composition. And, uh, Typically, what is uh, uh, expected to work is so-called product rule, but the product rule involves
involves this guy in the frame inside, which is a plus. And so basically it means that we need to, to, to be able to, to, uh, to add in some way to ZX diagrams. So that's why my talk is not called only differentiation of ZX diagram, but addition and differentiation of ZX diagram, because uh, these two problems are, uh, uh, are kind of related to each other. So this is a very brief introduction of, uh, to ZX, and I think that uh, uh, things will probably dramatically change for color-blinded people today because uh, uh, I use a color-blinded friendly code where uh, the green spider is now white and the red spider is now gray. So, and uh, basically one extra thing that I added is a triangle, which is a transform, which is a diagram with one input, one output, map zero to zero, one to zero plus one. And uh, it is, uh, it can be perfectly expressed uh, using the red and green spiders, but uh, uh, we introduce it because we're going to have a heavy use of it. And it's just a syntactic sugar that encodes this transformation. So a uh, traditional slide with axioms. Uh, and uh, why ZX is so uh, uh, good for quantum computing is basically beca uh, because uh, it is pretty natural and easy to perform two very important things, uh, tensor product and composition, but not the addition. So things are getting worse with the addition. But it turns out that there are special diagrams for which the task is actually a little bit easier. So these diagrams were called controlled states in the work of Chandel, Perdri, and Velmar. And uh, basically, a control state is a diagram with one input and then outputs. And if you plug zero, like the, the uh, red empty spider, you're going to get a uniform superposition times some constant. But if you plug uh, one, you're going to get some diagram. And uh, what we say is that a control diagram encodes this state that you obtain by plugging one uh, inside of it. So this. Uh, the, the concept of control state is also developed in the next, uh, in the talk you're going to see next. Uh, it's a little bit different definition. So, um, but the nice property of control state is that uh, they're actually pretty good adapted for the addition. So, for example, let's imagine that we have two control state D1 and D2. And uh, the guy that you see on the left, the D plus, it's um, for the first, also a control state, and uh, even more. So, if you plug one in it, you're gonna you're gonna have something which is a entry, uh, which can be interpreted as an entry-wise addition of the states D1, encoded by D1 and D2. So, there's so you can also have uh, a tensor product of this uh, control state. You can get a control state from control state of uh, um, of uh, a tensor product part. So uh, now the, the, the central idea, the central hint of our work is that if we were able to find some type of controlled version for any diagram, we're going to just perform the addition like I, I showed previously, and everything's going to be OK. So formally speaking, we are looking for a map that associates to any ZX diagram, another ZX diagram, uh, in a way that when you plug one to its entry and you turn some inputs to outputs, uh, uh, um, you're going to get the initial diagram. So, uh, and this map can be indeed defined in an inductive way. You can see that you can check by yourself or go to our archive preprint and see it down there that if you plug the P, you're going to get the diagrams in the brackets uh, down here for all basic generators. So, uh, you can also do it for tensor product and composition. And basically that's all. So now you define the map. So you have to only to take your initial diagram, decompose it as a uh, um, uh, generator, standard product and compositions. Uh, I want to attract your attention that uh, the result gonna depend on the order of your decomposition. It's not, uh, we think it's not a very big, big deal, but. <laughs> And uh, finally, uh, what you're going to get, so, uh, if you take two diagrams, you uh, take the corresponding control states and you get like this, some control states, you plug uh, one in the entry, you're done. So you got something which semantically is the sum of uh, your two initial diagrams. 
So now let's go to the differentiation part. Uh, so um, what we understand by the differentiation, basically the phases in ZX calculus can be also some functions, like uh, and Z, Z functions may depend on parameters. And typically when you take a parameterized quantum circuit from variational algorithms, your phase is going to be the functions of parameter of your circuit. And uh, uh, we restrict ourselves the function uh, here to linear functions where we only allow for integer coefficients before our parameter. So uh, just as it's the same thing as linear diagrams which were defined by Gendel, Perdri, and Vilmar previously. And uh, why we do, so it can appear a little bit restrictive, but uh, uh, we do so because you can easily see that when you try to take a derivative, your phase is going to move in a scalar uh, uh, to, close to your diagram, and you know, it's doable, but it's a whole new adventure to find a way to represent an arbitrary real scalar in traditional ZX. So this uh, problem can be removed if you look for some extensions like algebraic ZX, for example, you're going to see it in the next talk. We we wanted to, to stay traditional, so we we, uh, uh, we say only integer coefficients. Okay, so, and now when we say only integer coefficients, uh, we basically say that using fusion or probably more likely a fusion, we can end up with a diagram which either do not depend on our parameter or ha uh, have only, like the only spiders that are gonna contain the parameters inside gonna be um, P spiders. You can also use the Hadamard rule to change the color and so on. So they, uh, you're gonna end up with one legged uh, red spiders with a bat inside. And uh, we define the derivative in exactly the same way as, uh, no, in a very similar way as in the addition. So uh, basically we define a map which associate to our uh, um, generators and then to the compositions some control state, which uh, once you plug P inside, uh, gonna have, uh, um, gonna be equal semantically to the derivative of the initial diagram. So, and uh, for the composition, the de uh, derivative is um, obtained via well-known product rule. So I, I gave an example for, uh, for the tensor product. It's not so different for the composition you can find in its paper. And, uh, you know, finally, to obtain a derivative of an arbitrary diagram with respect to parameters beta, you can just uh, plug the one state in the entry and uh, you're done. So. Um, the bad thing is, like, it's a perfectly valid definition, uh, uh, but uh, the, the bad thing is that uh, it leads to some very complicated diagrams. So you can see on, uh, on the left something which can be interpreted as cosinus beta or cosinus two beta. Mm. And on the right, it's its derivative, so it's something like sinus beta, and it's terrible. Like, it's, it's, it has a completely insane look. Uh, so we figure out that probably we can do uh, we can do a little bit differently. So uh, in, uh, in, um, we were inspired by the observations that uh, for linear diagrams that we use, we can move all our spiders that contain the parameter on the top and then permute it in a way that you have only uh, betas from on at the beginning and minus betas in the end, and uh, then the, the diagram D here typically doesn't depend on beta. So now when, uh, if you are able to uh, have a derivative of the stuff which is uh, surrounded by a frame, uh, everything gonna be, you, you can just then uh, plug the output to the entry of D and, uh, and you're done. So, and we found a beautiful diagram which actually equals the, di the derivative of the diagram uh, in question. Uh, there is a beautiful induct uh, induction proof uh, uh, in the paper, you can check for it. And uh, um, so now we, you can use this formula directly and uh, just get the derivative of your diagram. So that's pretty old. Uh, and what are the possible future direction? So the possible future direction, we have a tool. So let's see if we can make some use of it find some interesting things with it and uh, probably you know in the direction of parameter shift rule i don't see where very clear how but well let the time do it work do its work and then uh, probably we can also use this framework in order to better understand the uh, uh, the variation algorithms, they are already uh, a very new uh, work which appeared which is doing it 
and um, which derive basically the results that are already known, but using the ZX and uh, and so on. But uh, uh, probably we can go further. So thank you for your attention. Uh, actually, this is indeed realistic. Like, for example, we started the, the whole uh, adventure because of uh, the application we had in mind, and it was the QOA application. And for QOA, the diagrams that are going to appear, they typically are uh, in these settings. So the, the diagrams that you have to deal with are linear. So it's not, uh, I mean, it's not so unrealistic, but there are also some way to, to extend the formalism, like, pro, for example, by using algebraic uh, uh, ZX or by, you can also represent a real number. I mean, we, we didn't do it because it's, it's, uh, it's heavy, but it's possible. I mean, so it was actually one of the, the potential future direction for the work. Uh, but I mean, even if in these restricted settings, the, the diagrams can be of use. And the point is it's still, I, I actually have a couple of slides with application, because, but I didn't show it because I'm, I think that I'm limited in time. So. Thanks for the nice talk. Um, so for the shift rule, like in the, in, the, in the restricted setting of where the shift rule works, do you expect to have some result like um, differentiation will end up with the same, um, kind of the same uh, ZX diagram you started with? Or? Uh, I would hope so, but I, uh, I didn't try very hard in this direction, but I think it, it's definitely something that which uh, merits to be explored. But uh, actually, this is a very new talk, so you, you can che uh, see that the, uh, like it appeared like very, very recently, and uh, um, we can wait for some time in order to combine it with ZX, like a couple of months, probably. Um, a final question. Thanks. So if I read it properly, the black triangle you showed is not a unitary operation. Sorry? The black triangle that you used in these diagrams is not a unitary operation. No, no. Right. So but the derivative is not unitary, so that's uh, normal that we don't have a unitary. So did you think at all about trying to use some kind of circuit extraction method on these diagrams to get something? Uh, I think it's it's a very promising promising direction. So uh, uh, how to try to probably not a circuit, but a circuit extraction, but a linear combination of circuit extraction. So I think that's typically what we have to to do in order to find some new uh, shift rules uh, with the diagrams and it uh, mm. thank you for the question all right let's uh, let's thank margarita again thank you hello everyone uh, i will talk about the uh, how how to sum and uh, exponentiate hamiltonians in the stop calculus uh, so basically uh, what uh, i'm first i will give an introduction to the x top they start with calculus and then talk about the sum of matrices and states and the Hamiltonians and the exponential and the lastly the Schrodinger equation. So uh, thanks to Mark Lee this uh, uh, excellent talk. So I can save some time to introduce to the X related things. So uh, so there are some uh, a little bit of difference here. We use the uh, the spider and the parameter can be the this spider can be. Uh, of the parameter can be any complex numbers, and uh, we uh, use a uh, W spider as a uh, uh, generator. And so now the triangle uh, he she used the is uh, now is in yellow, I think is a, and uh, um, it defined is defined uh, in terms of the uh, green and the W spider in this way, and uh, especially to um, to avoid uh, scalars, we we defined. Um, uh, and in addition to the normal uh, X spider, you can use the green spider and the, the Hadamard gate. So you can also normalize uh, the green, the red spider with uh, two special uh, 
phases is zero and pi. So once um, um, in doing this, you have uh, you can see here you can the 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 phase free uh, rare spider is uh, now there's no uh, coefficient, no no other coefficient, just one. So it's normalized, and then in this way, uh, this red dot is just uh, get zero, uh, no scalar. This is a uh, uh, bread zero, and this pi is just uh, get one, and this uh, this pi is just uh, the bread one. So no scalar. So we just normalize it, and then and then uh, here you can see the green spider is just uh, uh, the parameters here. It's not e to i e to i alpha is normal, um, so. So it's just any compressed numbers a. So here, the so the normal uh, circle green spider is just here. It's just like the it's a square box with the parameter e to i alpha. And so you phase free, we ignore the one here. So the dark spider is basically you uh, is associative. So um, that means um, so if you've got the zero input is zero, then you got uh, uh, oh, oh sorry. You got all zero. You got all zero. But if you got uh, a pi in, as input, then everything is. Then this is the whole double state. So that is except one one in the in each term. Um. So using this, this is what we call the double calculus. Um. So um. So in this calculus, you have the the lu is a little bit different from the. Basically the same um, from the what we used before uh, as uh, algebra equal zx. So now the spider fusion rule is uh, of the z spider is just a multiplication when you when you do the fusion, and uh, so uh, the dark spider and the, the the green and red spider and the triangle have a relation as this. This uh, can be seen as a decomposition of the dark spider. Okay, that that's basically uh, the rules. So you can see now here everywhere, except for this harmonic gate, this is a normal harmonic gate. So uh, all the other rules has no scalars. So this is uh, uh, um, convenient. So here we use. Uh, so how do we do the uh, ZSW and uh, do the sums in ZSW calculus? So it's uh, uh, we have some similar ideas. Uh, um, Margaret has uh, presented. So we use uh, controlled. Uh, but we have two control, two types of control things. The so one is control matrix. So this idea is similar to what is used in quantum circuit. When you do control, you have zero, you do nothing. So if uh, you got you, if you apply, then you get the the uh, the matrix you want you, you want to control. And uh, the other type is uh, the control state, which is uh, uh, which is quite similar to uh, the previous talks results. But here. Um, we we do when we and the input is zero then it's all zero so uh so i think they they use the all um pass state uh when, when this part then it's just the original state so that's the way we do the control state and once you do the control state then you can um so you can also do the control sum and the control product so for for different metrics the control duct you can use just use a green spider and to, to put them together. And here you use uh, for controlled uh, sums, uh, you can use different uh, for this metrics with the coefficient, uh, linear uh, uh, coefficient of a linear combination, you use the CI, then you just put a CI in the green box here and with uh, top uh, a type spider, um, then, then you got this controlled sum. And uh, so once you have this, you can also do control states. Once you have a control states, you you, you have uh, you can define control states. So, uh, which uh, also constitutes any compressed numbers. And so, uh, once you have these kind of control states, then so uh, what's the diagram for the uh, for the sums? So here, so if you have the matrix uh, M1 to Mk, and uh, then then. And also you have the weighted uh, sum. Uh, the coefficient is ci to ck, and then uh, using the controlled diagrams, controlled diagrams, then you can get the the whole thing, the sum of the m1, the c1 times m1 plus uh, ck times mk. So you got this diagram for the sum of this this weighted matrix, this weighted sum of matrix. Then it's, you just put a pi. Uh, basically, you just put a pi uh, on the top of the double spider. 
Uh, so similarly, if you have, you have controlled states, for any state, basically it's vectors, you want to sum them and you just need to represent their controlled states and put a pi on the top, then you get the sum. So that's the way we, that's the way we do use the control sum. Control sum. But how do you realize them? The problem, <coughs> sorry. How do you realize them? And so, so in the previous talk, uh, I think uh, they used the, um, the, the uh, inductive method. But for now, we use uh, something um, uh, more, a kind of more maybe constructive. And so we use uh, um, for, for control matrix, how do we realize? So each matrix you can, uh, in linear algebra, you can deconvert uh, y elementary transformation and then you get, uh, you can represent all the uh, matrix in these W diagrams. So the, the key thing is how do you do the, how do you control the elemental matrices? So it is very simple. So, so, so with the, without uh, control, the all, all the elementary matrices, just the, if we ignore this uh, vertical line, then it's, it's the diagram for the uh, elemental matrices. So to do, so do the control, you just add a line, you just add a line to the end gate. This is a, this end gate. Then you got the all the control element matrices. Then you can realize the control uh, matrices and you get the sum. That's the way. And also, if you have any vector like uh, two to m uh, from a zero to a to two to m minus one, you have two to m dimension. And so for this vector, for any vector, for any complex numbers, and so. How do we represent the control, uh, control states? So we basically, because we have a normal form based on this the XW calculus. So basically it is here, it is here. If you, uh, here, if on the top of the um, dark spider is, is a pi, then this is the normal form. Not, not the left part, just the right part. Then the, this is the normal form for this uh, vector. So here you just need to do the control and uh, giving this vector to the control state, you just need to, uh, to add some green spider and put them together, then you got the control state. And then that means, uh, sorry, then that means that you got the control state, then, then, then the sums, uh, you can, you can use them to, to, to directly to get the sums. So that's the way how, how we do the, the sums. Uh, okay. To use this idea, then we can do and uh, represent any Hamiltonian in this lovely calculus. So here, if you give Hamiltonian in terms of poly operators, and so let's say if they did uh, each of PIG, then how, then the diagram of this sum is, is just this one. So this one is uh, on the top is the, the dark spider with the pi. And so you connect to, so it depends on the, uh, the PIJ. If the PIJ is not equal to I, then you connect with why this pink node, you connect to them you connect to the, the JS file. So if, if there is, if the BIJ is I, is identity is I, then you don't, you don't, you don't connect to them. So just, that's basically, and you have Arama everywhere. And this is the, the, the CIs are just the Clifford conjugation. So that's the way you can directly uh, represent them. So for example, if you have uh, two uh, ha uh, Hamiltonian uh, in this form, then you, you can see if these are Z, Z you, you just put the connection to them because they are not identity. So here also, I didn't, uh, there's a connection to them, all of them. So because this is X, you have a conjugation, you have a harma. Uh, similarly for this one, for this uh, Hamiltonian. So you can, you can represent the, any Hamiltonian directly. And so, so, and then we use this idea, we use method to uh, represent the, the um, uh, Hamiltonian, which used in a, in a very recent paper by, um, uh, uh, I think, Bob Greeny and, uh, and, and, and others, a lot of people, they, 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 I think this is the first paper which used quantum uh, computing methods to, uh, to, uh, to help to design the uh, carbon capture uh, materials. So we use uh, our method and automatically to uh, represent uh, the Hamiltonian used in their paper. So that's that's the way. And also we can we can we can re do some representation of Ham uh, Ham Hamiltonian exponentiation. So we use the bas basically we use the Kelly uh, Hamilton theorem because for any exponent. Uh, exponentiation, uh, you can you can represent, uh, they can represent as this uh, uh, weighted sum, right? 
So use our uh, previous results, then it is basically uh, can be represented as this diagram, as this diagram. So you can see it. Um, so for example, so you have, uh, if you have this Hamiltonia and then the, then the uh, exponent, exponential um, becomes uh, this diagram and just sum this up. Um, but, uh, so because Hamiltonian, they are, they are, uh, 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 the exponentiation of Hamiltonian is the unit, right? So we want to have, uh, but this diagram, this diagram is not uh, uh, directly a unitary form, right? So we want to make it a unitary. So the way we do it to, um, we, we, we try the uh, uh, a simple toy, toy example. Uh, I think basically it's a hard problem uh, in general, but uh, for some maybe simple case, we can, we can, have, a, we can have a way to, uh, to represent the, 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 the unitary. Uh, uh, the unitary uh, according to the, this, this type of diagram. So what we do is just to use the rewriting, basically use the rewriting to simplify this diagram. And then we get this, and uh, this kind of things. And uh, the box, because it's very general uh, for AB. So, so the box is a little bit uh, complicated parameters. And so here, this one is just the, the green box. And here, this, the, uh, this, 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 this pink, oh, sorry, this pink, this pink box is just uh, the uh, conjugated uh, by Hadamard uh, to the uh, to the green box. So, uh, so basically, it's kind of uh, it's like a, a generalized order order decomposition. So, it's, uh, you can see it's a kind of a, a circuit form. So, in this way, we, we try this one, and lastly, we can do we can do something to describe um, use this diagram to describe some property of the solution of Schrodinger equation. So basically uh, for this Schrodinger equation, we can represent in an in a, a abstract way uh, 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 as this diagram. But actually uh, we can fill in, uh, I didn't show the detail here, we can fill in all the box. We can fill in all the box with the, with the ZXW diagrams. So that's, this, this is just a high level, uh, high, high level diagram. So, so using this, uh, the, the sum method and the properties of the control states, we can, we can, we can show uh, purely by di diagram that uh, uh, any linear combination uh, of the solutions of, uh, of a Schrodinger equation, they can, uh, they, uh, yeah, the, the Schrodinger equation satisfy the, um, uh, its, its solution sat satisfy a li li linearity. And uh, so we can show, basically show this by, so this property by this diagram, and so when we do the proof, we do fill in all the box with the ZSW characters. So finally, for the future work, uh, we can we want as we just show a toy example for circuit extraction from the uh, Hamiltonian exponentiation. Uh, so we we basically want to do automated circuit ex uh, extraction, and we also want to uh, apply to uh, Hamiltonian simulation uh, problems in quantum chemistry. And also, uh, I think like uh, uh, Mark later mentioned, there could be some application to quantum uh, approximate optimization. That's, that's it, thank you. Thank you, Harney. Any questions for Harney? Ross. Thanks, Harney. Uh, can you say anything about the size of the diagrams that you get after this differentiation? Which diagram? Which diagram and the size? Yeah. In the, uh, this diagram? So in general, when you're doing this differentiation process, how much bigger is the resulting? Oh, uh, yeah, if you represent, uh, if basically for now, we didn't do any, oh, sorry. We didn't do any simplification. So basically, when you represent a Hamiltonian, so, so it's the same size that you have how many uh, item, how many items in the Hamiltonian, then you have how many in the diagram, uh, the, the size the same. Other questions? Okay, 
thank you for the talk. Um, I have a question about um, about the, the control matrix and control state. Mm -hmm. So when you say control matrix, it should be a, a matrix with the same number of inputs and outputs, right? Because you say that it's the identity uh, and the control is zero. Is here, yeah. The way, way, when we say so, so for control matrix. Yeah, for control matrix. Uh. So and uh, so, can you define a, a, a control matrix uh, which is not squared, which is uh, ah, uh, a yeah here here yeah yeah right here is a is a square. Um, so we, we didn't do the control matrix for non-square. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I think it may maybe possible, but I, we didn't do that. It's not sure. Um, yeah, because you. Can... Yeah, it's just for the square case. Yeah. Yeah, because you can. Uh, okay, maybe you can add some ancillary qubits. Yeah, make yeah. It square, but it depends where you add the ancillary. Oh yeah, yes, yes, it's yes. Not yes, going to be. Add some ancillary. Yes, yes, I think that's a good way. Yeah. Is there any hope of doing subtraction and scalar multiplication of ZX diagrams as well? Sorry? Is there any hope of doing subtraction and scalar multiplication as well for ZX diagrams? You, you have this method of doing addition of ZX diagrams using the control. Yeah. Uh, so can you do subtraction and scalar multiplication using a similar technique? Yeah, so subtraction is just uh, minus one times. Yeah, I think it's the same. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Okay, uh, I have an another question about uh, the, the control uh, diagrams, because in the construction, you, you start from the semantics. So you explain how oh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you write the, how you find yeah, 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 control yeah. diagram starting from the semantics. Yes, yes. So if I, I give you a, a diagram representing this matrix, this, uh, so do you have to compute the semantics and then uh, extract the, the, the control version, or is there a way to just... Uh, just yeah, that's a very version? good question. Yeah, here, yeah, here in, in this paper, we, we do use the uh, semantics. So basically, you, you need to uh, compute the semantics first. Um, but in, um, I think in the next talk, uh, so uh, Luigi will show another method, which is used uh, based on the diagram. We do basically do factorization. Uh, to factorize the common part first. Yeah. Let's let's hold any further questions for, for the coffee break. And let's switch to Richie. But first let's thank Harney again. In the third and third and final installment of how to do X and Y in the ZX calculus, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about differentiating and, and integrating in the ZX calculus. This is joint work with uh, Honey Wang. Um, and we are Cambridge Quantum, now continuing. Um, so Thanks to the very excellent talks given by Margarita and Hani just now. Um, I, I don't need to go too much into the detail what diagrammatic differentiation is, but as a recap, you want to, diagrammatic differentiation is, is um, how if, if you, let's say every diagram, every parameterized diagram represents a parameterized matrix, which you can take the derivative of. So what diagrammatic differentiation is, is, is whether you can go from diagram first and then interpret it as the differentiated matrix. Why do you want to do this? Well, we've had a lot of motivation already uh, so far, but I guess the first, the most obvious thing is um, if we can differentiate integrate in ZX calculus, then we can start analyzing quantum machine learning phenomena, such as the Brown Plateau in the ZX calculus. And in more abstract terms, you can do more an analytical things in the ZX calculus, such as uh, having the Taylor series or the Fourier transform or in the ZX calculus, and even do the Schrodinger's equation in the ZX calculus. Um, so some of these I've been partially checked up already, but if, if you feel inspired by the talks today, um, here are things you can work on. Um, yep, so a bit of you know, a gentle ramp up on how to do differentiation in ZX calculus. Um, I first started differentiating some, some Pauli and phase gadgets in my master's thesis 2020. And um, here's an example of a phase gadget in the ZX calculus. It looks like this. And if you want to differentiate the whole diagram, um, by the linearity, uh, by linearity of differentiation, this just amounts to differentiating the parameterized part of the diagram. So since there's only one parameterized spider here, you 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 take the taking the whole derivative, the derivative of the whole diagram is just taking the derivative of this composed of the rest of the unparameterized part of the diagram. So if you compose it with this, or you take the derivative, you get this, both of this, you do the pi copy rule, and you end up with the matrix, uh, the original diagram 
plus the ZZZ. So this is how you know this is in fact um, e to the i theta ZZZ. It's a it's a Z. It's Pauli exponential. Um, unfortunately, if you have multiple parameterized spiders of the same parameter in the diagram, you need to use the product rule. Um, here's here's some work by um, me and Alexis and Giovanni on this. This is a, like a categorical version of taking derivatives and diagrams in general. And if you have multiple occurrences of the same parameter, you need to use the product rule. And so here's the monoidal version of the product rule with um, the tensor products and composition. Um, so you, you start off with a single diagram, you take the derivative, you get a sum of diagrams, which is fine if you want to just um, evaluate it as a matrix in the end. But if you want to do further rewriting on it, it's often much better to have a, have a single diagram because that tells you like where things are entangled, how things are connected and so on. So this is uh, Chen Zhao and Gao Xiaoshan realized this, and they uh, did this for, they started doing this for parameterized quantum circuits. And specifically, they, they derived a rule on how to, um, I think this is how you differentiate a, a diagram with a single instance of a phi to j. And if you, if you double the diagram in the expectation of a Hamiltonian, you can differentiate a diagram with a single occurrence of theta and a single occurrence of minus phi to j. And um, in fact, you can interpret this as, um, the parameter shift rule by Schroeder L, uh, a penny lane, uh, and Zanadu as a single diagram. So if you decompose the red spider here, the red pi, into um, outer product of 0, 0, and 1, 1, you'd in fact get um, the parameter shift rule. Um, so what we did in this paper was um, how to differentiate arbitrary ZX diagrams in a, in a, in a direct way. And, uh, how to also some extra stuff on how to do definite integration of a circuit like diagrams, like the ones I just had here, um, for up to three occurrences of um, the parameter. So three, three thetas and three minus thetas, so six. Um, and we use these techniques to further analyze quantum machine, machine learning phenomena such as brown plateaus um, using the ZX calculus. Um, yeah. And uh, we, ha we had a talk already this morning about adding a differentiating ZX diagram. So because you, you have an inductive way of adding, uh, turning any R diagram to a control diagram, and then you have a way to add control diagrams, you can use this to effectively do differentiation of, of ZX diagrams. But this is a more of an inductive method, and it's kind of hard to use in practice. And uh, in comparison, in practice, um, if, if this one thing I can take away from this talk is if you want to differentiate this ZX diagram, which is three thesis, three thesis in it, all you need to do is add this differentiation gadget, which has a W state in it, and you just join them, join up all the parameterized spiders. So this is how you do it. It's kind of a well, one operation in terms of drawing it. Um, if you allow the W spiders to have multi legs in the generator definition. Um, in, in the paper, we went a bit more general. Um, we want to differentiate algebraic ZX diagrams. So instead of green spiders as the generators, we had these green boxes, which is just instead of having zero plus e to the i theta one, you, you turn the e to the i theta into any, you can have instead any complex number A. Um, so to differentiate these types of diagrams, you need to use a slightly different gadget. And here we went slightly further and said, not just linear, um, the difference can't, don't just have to be like, linear multiples of a parameter, you can have any function that's differentiable. Um, so you have f of t of a, of a spider. And when you do this, you get a chain rule, kind of like this. And uh, you see a fraction here, but we have a version that works when uh, f is 0. Um, I already talked about this. Um, and the, the way the sketch of the proof is, uh, it turns out the product rule seen here is very similar to the w state. So in the product rule, we differentiate a product of three terms. Um, everything is, um, you get a sum of terms where, where one term is differentiated and the rest are undifferentiated. And in W state, um, each term, everything is zero except one place where it's a one. So um, in action, so different, to, to differentiate any um, algebraic ZX diagram, you can first pull out all of the green boxes that are parameterized by T if you differentiate in respect to T. And uh, so you only care about differentiating the parameterized part. The rest is unparameterized. So you look at this, you apply the product rule, you get a sum of terms where only one of the, one of the boxes are differentiated, the rest are undifferentiated. And then you can pull some stuff out. This is just the fusion rule. You can do a bit more work. And you notice that the green spider becomes 
uh, the red spider here at the top. So if you keep doing this, you realize this is this is type, this is diagrammatic factorization, right? So like you have the bottom bit is common across all three all, all three of these diagrams, except for the top bit where it's one zero 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 one zero 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 one, and that's the W state. So this is the differentiation gadget, and um, this is how you differentiate um, normal ZX diagrams. If you're um, so this is beyond the linear case, but if you're if, you, if your phase was like, say, theta squared in, 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 in the first spider, then the green box would say two theta. Um, but this is not easy to do in the you know, conventional ZX calculus. So that's why we had to add the green box in the nonlinear case. Um, and it turns out if um, all of the G primes are the same, i.e. if the original diagram, every, every prime to the spider with respect to T is actually primed by G of T, then you would get G prime of T across the board. And you can just pull it out like this. And this is your chain rule, right? Because it's just the same, same derivative, but everything's multiplied to the scalar multiple of G prime. So this, this, this pi connected by green box is just a scalar multiple green prime, yeah, G prime. So you can, you can, can do further simplifications of this. So if you're only interested in differentiating circuit-like diagrams, you get this. Um, so it's just a W state connected. The minus features, you get a minus green, minus one green box out, and that's just a pi spider. And uh, in the n equals one case, you actually you can diagrammatically show you recover the shift rule that we, we saw earlier. So the shift rule and the direct diagrammatic differentiation, they, 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 they check out. Um, so, so far, so good. Um, for diagrammatic integration, we, we showed that it works for n equals one, n equals two, n equals three. And um, so if you had an uh, expectation-like diagram, this is a scalar diagram, well, we add the extra legs out. But if you, if you had one occurrence like this, you can take the trace sort of like this. For n equals two, you have to do something slightly more complicated, but it's not too big. In the n equals three, n equals three case, you get something kind of rather nice looking, but doesn't immediately generalize as you would hope. Um, so with these combined techniques, you can start doing, you can start looking at quantum machine learning phenomena such as uh, band plateaus. So if you had a quantum circuit, you had some expectation respect to some Hamiltonian, some observable, you can, you can build this diagram where all the features in your ansatz are gone. So, so this is actually, the H is actually often Clifford or even fit completely phase-free. And if you can contract this diagram and you can show it respect to N, where N is the size of the circuit, you can, you can perhaps find an efficient way to detect brown plateaus. And uh, this is uh, some, some, some early work um, that by, by Mark. In the audience, he's he's a, a MSc student um, doing his master's project with us at Continuum. So this is an IQP ansatz, with um, and we measure and according to the X um, um, observable. And uh, so the overall diagram is like this. And when you look at the variance of this, the derivative of this Hamiltonian, you get something like this. And you notice in the middle there are no phases whatsoever. Everything's Pauli even, and you can rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it. Um, so this is this work in progress, but uh, yeah, um, hopefully we, we, can make, we can make some progress. So in conclusion, we have new analytical tools for ZX. Um, so there's new problems we can tackle using these tools. Um, uh, for future directions, maybe you can extend it to like more exotic types of ZX, such as the QDIP ZX, QFINIT ZX. Can do, hopefully we can do our trade differentiation. It's kind of hard. And um, other things we can work on more practically is look for new gradient recipes for quantum machine learning and um, detect brand plus holes. So um, yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you, Richie. Questions for Richie? So this might be a bit of a, a very distant future work question, but uh, do you envision uh, doing any sort of iterative processes with this? So machine learning, for example, requires, you know, you need to reserve some information about this gradient and then use it further, you know, to actually compute some cost function and things like that. Is this something that you think will be useful? Have you thought about composition or iteration or iterative processes in, in this sense? Yeah, um, good question. So, I mean, 
a lot of what we're doing now is like we have a quant we already know how to do quantum machine learning well we know the setup so so and uh, we want to replace bits of it with zx and so like this is a diagram so like let's say you had a quantum circuit you can take the derivative of it and you can rewrite it and maybe find recipes that sort of thing um it's not immediately clear to me how you can put it all in one loop so like the whole process is a single zx diagram but maybe maybe that's future work for for future us Could you could you show us again what happens when you increase the number of occurrences in the integration? I didn't really follow what was uh, the um, issue there. Yeah, integration is a bit fuzzy, isn't it? So so we showed the how how it works for n equals one, two, and three. Um, it's the the rest. So other cases is more of a exercise of nice um, matrix synthesis. Um, so, so we can do it. It's just we haven't found nice versions of the thing. So in n equals one, you, you it, it looks like a trace. And it's n equals two. You get you get you remove the phases, and you you get these um, extra things. By the way, we're doing definite integration over the whole um, the whole circle. So that's what it looks like. And n equals three looks like this, but it doesn't generalize directly. So right, but you you can do it for any number of occurrences. <laughs> it's just a mess. Yeah, it's just a mess. We can use normal form. We can use whatever. Okay. We just want it to keep looking. And does this work if you have expressions involving more than one variable? Yeah, so this is, this is yeah, we're only integrating with respect to one parameter. If you had other parameters, you want to do triple integrals, you can do that. Yeah. Same with differentiation, by the way. Uh, these were partial derivatives. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, one more and then coffee break. Am I missing any hands again? Yes, I am. Thank you for the talk. Uh, uh, would, it, would it be possible to extend your work to the uh, differentiation of a sequence of a circuit or diagrams? Sequences of circuits. Can you, can you clarify what you mean by sequence of circuits? Mm, well, you can imagine uh, some uh, sequence <laughs> to re which converge to the some point, and maybe you can represent, perhaps, uh, <laughs> um, some. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not entirely what sure. What can but, but, we represent of, with this? But I'm not entirely sure. But my answer is probably going to be maybe. So so let's talk after the break. So yeah, thanks. All right. Let's uh, thank Richie again.